another wet fly today from Ray Bergman's Trout. This is called the Jenny Lind. It's a very, very colorful pattern. That's pretty much why I picked it. I just like the color combinations of the, the light purple and the red in this. Yellow kind of adds a little bit to it, but it's a nice matched and married wing pattern. Like I said, very colorful, pleasing to the eye, apparently to the fish as well. That's the Jenny Lind and I'll get started tying. Begin the Jenny Lind by having my hook on the vise. This is a Mustad 33.99 in a size six. Go ahead and debarb the hook. And I'm going to attach my thread. I'm going to start with a Danville six aught in white because we have a yellow floss body on this. I'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and run it down putting a base layer of thread along the hook shank. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way to the end of the hook shank. It's just in between the point of the hook and the point of the barb. And I'm going to tie in the tail. There's no tip or tag on the Jenny Lind. The tail is made however out of a light purple and I'm using some goose quill here for that. I've already cut out a couple of slips here. I want to make certain I've got the tips evened up. And I'm going to measure those about a shank length long. I'm going to tie those in. And trim away the excess so it's the length of the body. The rib on the Jenny Lind is a gold tinsel. I'm using a, this is a Danville silver and gold tinsel in a size 14. You could certainly use a 16 and 18 if you want to on this. A little bit bigger hook, so I'm going to go with the 14 and attach this along the hook shank with the silver side out. And now I'll put in the body. I'm using a Danville four strand rayon floss in yellow. I'm going to use all four strands on this. And attach that to the hook, make it the length of the body. And then bring my thread forward, collecting the butt ends of that tail, the floss, and the rib down to the hook shank. I want to make certain when you're tying in those materials that the thread torque isn't pulling over away to the point where that tail gets kind of cocked. That's what happened to me. So I'm just, while I can, twisting it back. Even if you have the materials all bound to the hook shank up here and you're ready to put in the body and you notice that, you can usually pinch that real hard and scooch that back up your way on the hook shank. But they're all set. So I'm going to put the floss body in and the rib, and then we'll get to the throat and the wing.
noticed that when I started to put that body in, Floss wasn't cooperating too well. And as I started to wrap it in, two things happened. It started to spread out a little bit, but as I came around right around the point, it grabbed that floss and, that, and then that's what it did. It changed all those fibers under different tension, started spreading out even more. And I just from experience knew that if I kept trying to go down the hook shank with it and fight it, it wasn't going to go in right. So I took the time to unwrap it, get back to the beginning and start over again. And that paid off. Always remember, you can just take your time and unwrap something and go back uh, instead of trying to struggle with it. So body is in. I'm ready for my throat and hackle. I'm going to change over to this is a Danville 6 aught in black. I'm going to get some wax on my thread. Advance my thread down to the end of the head space, and I'll put in the throat. For the throat, I'm using red schloppen. It's just a red hackle. I'm going to use some schloppen. I'm going to measure that so that they go just past the point into the throat of the hook. Three or four wraps to secure that in and our throat is all set. The wing on the Jenny Lind is the light purple with a stripe of red down the middle. So I've got my light purple. This is goose I'm going to use and the red for the stripe. I've got these already put together. Now I didn't get the tips even and I've got the width is a little off. So I want to get my tips nice and even. That's the first thing. I get those evened up. Then what I want to do is make certain that I have the red stripes matching up. Because as long as the red stripes are matching up, then I can get the width on the top of the stripe and the bottom to be even. These are off just a little bit. One on your side, now my side. Got about one barb on both sides, a little bit too wide. Might be splitting hairs, but when you're doing these things, sometimes you just want to take the time to make certain you're getting those right. So I'm going to peel off one barb from each side. If I can get it, there is. That will even up my two sides for the most part. And now I have my wing ready to tie in. I'm going to take one more off the bottom. A little bit more here. There we go. I'm going to measure these so that the tips of the wings go back about halfway down the tail or so. Going to help these a little bit by pushing down on the front here, then pinching and pulling that down to the hook. Going to help me have a little bit more of a swept front end so that they're not cocked up at an awkward angle like that. Trim away the excess. One on my side is 
separating from the red stripe just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I got a little bit more I can trim away. Sometimes you can grab those and kind of pull them back into the head space, but sometimes it's worth just getting in here with a nice pointed pair of scissors and just trim that out. Unless you have to bind down, then the more control you have over the size and shape of the head, because you're going to use the thread to define the size and shape of the head. I'm going to flatten my thread. And a 9 or 10 turn whip finish in here to smooth off the head. Trim away my thread. A little bit of head cement on both sides. And I will come back in a moment. Put some black lacquer on that to smooth the head off there. But that is our Jenny Lind. I still have. See, on my side, after getting that tied in, it's separating a little bit. Now, again, splitting hairs, I suppose, because as you're fishing this fly, it is going to all separate anyway. But to frame it or give it to somebody or something, you'll want to not have that in place. However, that said, I will go as far as saying, sometimes you just can't make these work. Something about it, I don't know if maybe the, the one side of the barbs here just aren't grabbing the other. One's too worn, they just don't match up. But sometimes, even though it looks like you've got them just the way you want and working, Sometimes you just can't get these things to, to quite match up right. So I'm going to leave it at that. The tips you'll also notice are a little bit ragged and they don't quite grab up to, to make a nice smooth tip. And that has to do with the actual feathers that I have for that. The tips are just a little frayed a little bit more, but so that is the Jenny Lind. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.